Cool. So today I'll be talking about multidimensional pricing. This is mostly a discussion of the work Dynamic Pricing for Non-Fungible Resources by Theo Diamandis and collaborators. And yeah, the idea is to sort of explore this paper and discuss how can we leverage the knowledge on this paper to our case. By the way, I think uh, Theo Diamandis is going to present this at the upcoming Crypto Econ Day. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Now, this paper is super um, dense mathematically. So I'm going to I'm going to start with like summarizing the paper and then uh, I'll go through the results. OK, so what do they do? Well, the authors here provide a principal way to design a transaction fee, fee mechanism that can price uh, multiple non fungible resources. So what do they mean by this? Well, they can charge gas for a transaction if it's very say CPU heavy and charge a different amount of gas for a transaction or a message if it's very uh, memory intensive. Now, of course, this is very similar to what we're doing relating uh, related to gas lanes, because you can then create lanes uh, for different types of messages or for the demand-driven onboarding idea that A North was proposing, uh, et cetera. So there's a lot of relation to, to what we're looking at. And furthermore, the paper has a lot of interesting results. The first one is that their transaction fee mechanism is based on optimization-based framework, which means that the results are optimal in some given sense. And the second one is that their transaction fee mechanism design can be decomposed into optimizing two objectives or solving two problems. The first one is the network designer's problem, which can be understood sort of as how much resources can we spend without putting the network in a lot of stress in such a way that we make money, and the network participants' problem, which can be sort of understood as uh, which transactions should we include on a block or which messages should we include on a block such that both miners and users are as happy as possible. Okay, they also derive a lot of interesting properties from this transaction fee mechanism uh, following some very simple but kind of abstract assumptions such as convexity of the state space. And they prove or they hint at the fact that transaction fee mechanisms are deeply related to iterative methods for numerical optimization. So if you like linear algebra, this is definitely a paper that I recommend you look at. Okay, so now the rest of the presentation gets very both mathy and hand wavy somehow. So it's a lot of notation, but it's not super uh, in depth, but okay, let's get to it. So let's consider a system with M different resources and N transactions in the mempool. So M here can be the number of lanes, uh, or if we're using lanes and something demand-based or whatever, okay? Now let's define B star as a vector with the target utilization of these resources. So B I uh, is the target of resource I. And let's define X as this vector that takes values of zero and one that has a length N that includes all possible transactions in such a way that the jth component of x is one if the transaction is included and it's zero otherwise. Okay. Furthermore, we define A as the matrix whose jth column represents the vector of resources AJ consumed by transaction J and P as the vector of uh, Ps. Okay. So given this, we can write the total uh, resources consumed by Y, which is just A times X. Right, so the, the 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 resources utilized by each of those transactions uh, included the sum of that, and the total uh, amount of tokens spent as p transpose y. So basically, uh, the price of resource of all of the resources of type one uh, plus the price of resources of type of type two times the the consumption of those resources all the way to to the end. Okay, so. What is the goal of their paper? Well, they want to create an update rule such that if our expenditure is equal to the target expenditure, then there is no update. If we are spending more of the resource I than the target of resource I, then we increase the price of that resource. And similarly, if we are underspending, uh, if we're spending less of resource I than its target, then we decrease the price. Um, of that mechanism. And this is quite similar to the EIP 1559. It's quite similar to the mechanisms assigned that AXE has been working on, this uh, adjustable block size. Okay. Now, this is akin, like 
uh, achieving this goal is akin to the signing a transaction bin mechanism for which we need to consider the network utility and the participant utility. The network utility we're calling L of Y, right? It depends on uh, the resources used and the participant utility depends on X. So on the transactions and on the liquidity. Okay, so let's start defining network utility. We define the last function L as a function which maps uh, resource utilization Y to the quote unquote unhappiness of the network designer L of Y. Now, there are many different types of uh, last functions. Here, I'm going to show a couple of them. So as a first example, we have L of Y being equal to zero if Y equals B, if we're spending exactly the target and infinity otherwise, which can be interpreted as we're infinitely unhappy unless we're spending the optimal value. A second example is quite similar, but here, instead of uh, Y being dif different from B, B star is Y larger than B star, meaning that we're okay with using less than the target uh, expenditure, but we're infinitely unhappy otherwise. Or a third example can be given by this uh, quadratic norm here, which can be interpreted as we want to avoid deviating too much from the target B star. So we don't want to spend too little or too much in comparison uh, to the target. However, many, many, um, definitions of L exist, one can come up with whatever uh, definition of L such as long as uh, a few technical conditions are satisfied, basically that it's convex and lower symbol continuous. And as we will see later, each definition of curly L will imply a different update rule for the network fees. Uh, okay, now let's switch on to defining the network utility or the participants utility. Uh, by the way, I cannot see my mouse. If there's someone writing stuff on the chat, I cannot see you. Uh, anyways, yeah. Uh, so we define the joint minor user utility as Q. Okay. It, Q is a vector in Rn where the jth component of Q depends, uh, uh, is the user and minor utility of including a transaction uh, J on a given block. Now, it is very rare, if at all possible, to know the values of Q. However, under mild assumptions, their results show that their update rules don't necessarily depend on Q, which is uh, useful. Okay, and given this, we can define the participant utility U of X uh, as Q transpose X, basically as the sum of the utilities, of the joint minor user utilities of those transactions that get included uh, in the block. Okay, now putting these two components together, we can aim at solving the following problem. We want to maximize the user utility, the, the, the participant utility, uh, Q transpose X, minus the network unhappiness. Okay, subject to uh, that we're spending Y amount of resources and that X belongs to the set of admissible uh, transactions. This is a more, more of a... Um, a technical requirement, but it's uh, necessary for the formulation. Okay, so the variables in this problem are x and y, and the data of the problem are A, which again is the matrix of the, the transaction costs, um, or, the, or the resources, sorry, utilized by, by transaction J. Uh, S is the set of admissible transactions, and Q is the, is the joint minor user uh, utility. Okay, so how do we optimize this? Well, if you recall from high school or first years of college, uh, this is a constraint optimization problem. So one of the best ways of doing of solving it or the, sol the way of solving it is uh, to formulate it as a, as a Lagrangian, uh, Lagrangian problem. And if we do that, then we get something that looks like this. Okay, so we can define the Lagrangian uh, as this first line here, where this I of X is an indicator function uh, that says that X is, uh, is in this set that we need. And this P transpose Y minus AX uh, symbolizes the constraint of the, uh, of the, of the expenditure, okay? Furthermore, we can uh, move things around a little bit in this equation and obtain the formula below. And having defined the Lagrangian, we can also define what's called its dual, uh, which is this function G of P that is defined as the supremum over x and y of the Lagrangian, which if we 
massage it a little bit, we can get that this equation is equal to, um, to this supremum over y of p transpose y minus L of y plus the supremum over x of this other term. The first term that I'm calling L star is the network designer's problem. We want to find the expenditure that maximizes uh, this, this amount, price times expenditure minus the network unhappiness, plus this other term, which is the transaction participants problem, meaning what are the uh, messages that I want to include uh, from that set of admissible messages such that I maximize the, um, the joint user minor utility. Okay, then we can define this auxiliary function called the dual G of P as L star plus F of P, okay? And why do we want to do this? Well, why are we doing this Lagrangian and this dual formulation? Well, there's a very strong result in optimization or a fundamental result in optimization that says that if S star is a solution to the original problem, meaning maximizing uh, this utility minus the unhappiness, then it then it follows that the that the dual is always larger uh, than than this uh, solution for any value of uh, of p. The proof is uh, is a one liner. I don't think we need to discuss it. And uh, furthermore, under some technical conditions, it holds that there exists a price such that this holds uh, with equality, which is called strong duality, okay? So in, informally, this means that uh, maximizing the Lagrangian, uh, it's equivalent to minimizing uh, the dual, okay? So the problem boils down to uh, minimizing G of P. Okay, cool. So we want to minimize G of P. How can we do it? Well, if you recall from Calc 3 that uh, if a function is differentiable at a neighborhood of a point, then that function decreases the fastest in the direction of negative its gradient. And uh, let me see if I can click on this. And this in turn implies the following recursion. If we want to minimize this function, then what we can do is we take some uh, steps of size gamma in the direction of the of negative the gradient. So we move on for one step on that on that size uh on, on that direction sorry we achieve a new, a new point then we keep moving uh on that on that direction further and further now this formula here it's already kind of telling of something but uh i don't know does this formula look familiar to something let's maybe make it a bit more uh so let's maybe exemplify it. so let's consider a very simple one-dimensional example Okay, let our target consumption be half of the block size and let AJ be the gas used by transaction J, okay? Furthermore, let's consider this uh, loss function that we're infinitely unhappy unless we're using our, unless we're exactly at the target consumption and let's define I of X as this indicator function that we have here. Okay, so from before we have that our dual looks like this. Now, uh, from this formula here, the first term, we can see that this, this first term L of Y is either zero or infinity. So this term, the supremum of this term, it's only achieved when Y equals B star. And similarly here on, on, the, on the second term, we have that this supremum is only positive whenever uh, X is in this set, okay? So we get this expression that we have, that we have here that if we uh, replace the, the y by b star and x by x prime, which is the, the, the optimal messages that you would need to include on a block, then we get the following formula. Now, if we take the gradient of this with respect to p, we get uh, this. And if we plug this uh, result here back into the previous equation, we get a recursion formula that looks like this. Now it's starting to look a little bit more familiar. Now, what if we set the step size gamma to this uh, arbitrary thing? Well, then we recover something that looks like this. And I'm sorry, I don't know. I I I, I don't know how to point on this. Uh, but what does this uh, formula look like here? If AX is the total gas used at a given transaction, 
Well, it's exactly the uh, EIP 1559 uh, mechanism. And one can extend this framework to multiple dimensions or multiple gas lanes or uh, whatever. So in summary, the authors show an interesting way of con constructing transaction fee mechanisms based on optimization arguments. Uh, many transaction fee, uh, fee mechanisms fall into this formulation, such as the EIP 1559, an adjustable step, the additive increase, multiplicative decrease work that I know Sham has uh, worked on, the exponential uh, EIP 1559, which means there's a lot of research opportunities here. Uh, user utility is assumed to always be of the same form, while L of Y plays a, a role in the objective function. And clearly this can extend to gas lanes. Uh, however, we need to focus on designing and testing different uh, L Ys and As. So for future work, an example would be to consider gas lanes, two gas lanes separating FBM messages from status quo uh, Filecoin messages. So let rho the uh, be the lane width proportion and uh, B the node the maximum block size. So a potential formulation for this would be to have a target given by uh, B star here. So basically um, we aim at targeting for the status quo messages uh, half of the of the length of the gas uh, lane width. Same for the uh, FBM messages. And for the sum of those messages, we aim at having uh, half of the block size. We have the upper constraint that the resources cannot be more than their length and their sum cannot be more than the, than the block sizes. And we would have that the consumption would look uh, like this formula, this form uh, AJ. The next steps from here would be to implement and investigate for again, for different uh, rows, for different Ls, and test for, vari for variability, network revenue, and all these other things that we're interested in making. Okay, that's uh, it. Thanks for the attention. Let me just look at the at the at the messages. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's awesome, JP. I think a lot of us were a lot of the messages were just saying that high school math was was not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> I when I when I was studying in New Mexico, I I taught Calc, Calc three at the university and there was a kid there who, who was like uh, in high school was in this AP programs. I thought that was pretty cool. Nice. Man, this is a really neat uh, result. Um, yeah, it's it's super interesting. It's super, super interesting. So so one, one question I have, I wonder if you can go back to the, uh, I loved the chart with the, the uh, graph. Can you go to that one re real quick? Just this for one. like intuition uh what are x and y on there are those is x the uh we'll go ahead Do, right you... right uh so yeah so this would be like p1 and p2 so the components of this uh price vector right because this in 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 this formulation this p is uh multi-dimensional so yes that's that's a good um that's an interesting point. This this kind of update the price on, I mean, this formula here updates the price on both uh, dimensions in one go, depending on the gradient. So so uh, in my mind, like EIP 1559 is just a cross section of this because it's a one dimensional and we're changing the base fee. Exactly. And so exactly. In, in my mind, like I was, what I was thinking is I wonder if we can get rid of the, the idea of block uh gas lanes like hey separate pieces of the block are reserved and and you know uh you know storage provider messages need not mingle with uh fvm messages and they can't go back and forth across some me membrane but rather there's a different base fee for for each of those types they're all mixed together but like maybe you just crank the base fee up or down to towards the optimal I mean that that's what it is. Uh, the the gas lanes are about base fees. So, so. I, mm -hmm. I think that's what what we're talking about, like having two different base fees. But but would you would you like segregate the actual block into, you know, sixty percent of the transactions are reserved or not, or just let that float dynamically? Uh, don't I mean, have a variable. Reserving uh, okay. it by by price. So, so, so like they would have. 
like, I mean, base free comes from setting a target block size, right? So, uh, right, so, so the base fee is the one at which at that price, this block size, that is the target block size, is the one that, that comes out. Yeah? I see. Uh, but there, there's some I mean, there's some flexibility in that, uh, like it could be, it doesn't have to be like exactly the block will be divided this and this, but the targets of the block will be divided like this and this. Exactly yeah, yeah. That. But yeah, if if uh, one part ends up borrowing more than, than its target, then you'll increase the base fee of that one. And by the exactly. next round, that, 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 com that comes up in this formula, this last formula, B star, because I mean, in the formulation, you can define B star. The formulation that I'm proposing at the very end, this B star, this target depends on this uh, width or, or this proportion of the of the of the uh, the gas lane, like the width of the gas lane. But uh, I mean, I guess, yeah, it's, I, I think one, yeah, one 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 can construct. Uh, um, different different versions for this that that don't necessarily depend on this factor uh, row oh. can, can you show the 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 like the 1559 like result again uh but uh, okay but uh, so so here is uh, yeah so i mean the different thing here is that so x is a vector here and b star is a vector and a is a matrix or mm -hmm. yeah that's what's yeah, happening. This, this, yeah, this, this is yeah, this is sort of understood as a component-wise division. And is there uh, my, my only question here is so, so like this? I mean, what I had in mind simpler than this is like so you have n resources, so you would have n copies of 1559, which in this mm -hmm. language would end that having a A B a diagonal matrix, right? And then you have just n copies. Right. Is there a, what's the meaning of not having a diagonal A? Why, what was the meaning of A again? Why would it have like this kind so, of, what's this other interaction that can be introduced and why? So A is a matrix, it's it's by design not diagonal, uh, but A is a matrix where each column uh, represents the vector of resources AJ that are consumed by the transaction uh, J. Because then this gets multiplied, A gets multiplied by X, which is a vector element. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I can look at that later, I guess. No. No, okay, but so, so it's not a vector, it's not an M by M vector. Exactly, it's a, it's a, it's 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 not uh, it's not it's not a square matrix a. Uh, so, so I mean, so it's summing over the transactions and not over the. When I do mm -hmm. that uh, kind of that dot product there with the vector with x, mm -hmm. it's running over that n index right there. Uh, anyway, we mm -hmm. can talk about that later. Yeah, yeah. no one cares. <laughs> no, that's cool stuff. 